Okay, let's look at this uh, matric November 2018 question paper on electrostatics. It's an interesting question because you end up using the mass of an electron and the charge of an electron, which we don't do all that often. So let's have a look at what's happening here. It says three small identical metal spheres P, S and T on insulated stands are initially neutral. They are then charged to carry charges of minus 15 times 10 to the negative 9 Q and plus 2 times 10 to the negative 9 coulombs, respectively, as shown. The charged spheres are brought together so that all three spheres touch each other at the same time and are then separated. The charge on each sphere after separation is minus 3 times 10 to the negative 9. Now this comes back to grade 10 when you learn about electrostatics in grade 10 and it's the law of conservation of charge that in any physical process such as these spheres touching, charge is conserved. So the total charge on these spheres before touching is the same as the total charge on these spheres after touching, okay? And then when they touch, the charge averages out. So basically, there's no formula in the formula sheet for this, but you know you have to find the average. So this final charge here, okay, is going to be equal to all of the charges added together, okay, all of the charges added together, this charge, this is the first charge, okay, plus the second charge, Q, we don't know what Q is, plus this third charge, okay, and we need their signs because the signs are helping determine um, what, uh, if electrons were added or electrons were removed. So we add all the three charges together and then these are divided by 3 because there are 1, 2, 3 bodies. So this is the average is equal to the sum of the charges divided by the number of the charges. So if you work this all out in your calculator, bearing in mind that minus is gaining electrons and plus is losing electrons, if you put this all into your calculator, you should end up with Q having a charge of 4, times 10 to the negative 9 coulombs, no unit, no mark, the unit of charge is always coulombs. So there's the value of charge Q. Okay, now it says draw the electrical field pattern associated with the charged spheres S and T after they are separated and returned to their initial positions. If you look in the memo for this, there's actually two diagrams because obviously P is going to have an influence on S and T is also going to have an influence on S. So there's one diagram if you only pretend you've got S and T and there's another diagram that if you um, include P. Now remember this S, okay, we're drawing the field after they are separated. So this is the charge after they are separated, okay. So they are all negative, like charges repel. So we're going to draw the field for repulsion and then where will um, a positive charge move if placed in the field? It will be attracted so the arrows should be coming in to the point charge. So if we have a look here, here is the diagram here. Okay, let's put this diagram in here. So here's the diagram here. You can see the two charges. You can see here is the repulsion going on because they're all negative and there are the arrows coming in. So you get um, three marks. You have to have the correct shape, the correct direction, and you must show repulsion. Now, this is the other one. If you consider the third sphere, okay? If you consider the third sphere, let's see if we can get this to work. Why is this doing this? Oh, you see, this is what happens whenever you put diagrams in a document. Okay, this is a bit better now. So here, if you have a look here, this is S. Look, S is in the middle here. So because S is in the middle, P is having an effect. So this is if there's only two charges, and this is if there's three charges. They didn't ask you to draw P. They only asked you to draw S and T. So this is what you have to have is S and T, and T's field is normal with the repulsion here, but S's field has been um, amended on the left-hand side due to the presence of P. So they accepted both of these answers. 
Now it says to you, the spheres, each with a new charge of minus 3 times 10 to the negative 9, are placed at points on the x and y axis as shown in the diagram below, with sphere P at the origin. State Coulomb's law. Okay, learn Coulomb's law very carefully. If you state the wrong law in here, you're going to get zero. Now it says to you, calculate the magnitude of the net electrostatic force on sphere P. So now, if we have a look here, if we want to calculate the net force, what will the net force do to P? Let's make ourselves a little force kind of diagram. If we are at P, what is S going to do to P? Now remember, all of these spheres have this charge on them, and it's all the same. Like charges repel. So if you are at P, if you are P, what is S going to do to you? What kind of a force is S going to have? You are going to be repelled. So this is going to make you want to move downwards. Okay. So S is going to force P downwards. What is T going to do to P? They are like charges. They are going to repel. So once again, we're going to get... Where's my little arrow gone? We are going to get a force of repulsion in this direction. Okay. So let's just straighten that up. Now, if it's making you go to the left and down, where is the resultant going to be? Okay, I'm just moving this force over here so we can make a tail to head um, head to tail diagram. If it moves you down and across, where will my resultant force be? My resultant force, come here little arrow, my resultant force is going to be like this. Okay, so let us make this red. Can we make this red? Let's make this red for the resultant. Okay, so S makes this force go down. It makes, a, makes it P want to go down. T makes P want to go across. So my resultant is going to be down and to the left. So if we want to find the net force, we need to know the length of this, um, this, this arm of my little triangle I've made. So let's go first. Make sure you... Um, label everything. So the force of S on P, we're obviously going to use for force, we're going to use this formula here. Okay. So if we put this formula in here, the force of S on P is going to be K, which is 9 times 10 to the positive 9. I keep wanting to put to the negative 9. So there's K. And then Q1 and Q2 are the same because these two have got the same charge here. Remember it said this. Okay. So we're going to put this here. So this is going to be squared. Okay. Why is it going to be squared? It's going to be squared because um, the two forces are the same. So K, Q1, Q2. How do we turn this highlighting off? Then it is going to be over over, clearly we didn't turn it off. What is the diff distance between S and P? 0, 0,1 squared. Okay, so if you put this all into your calculator, if you put this all into your calculator, let's get rid of all of this, yes. What do you get if you put this all into your calculator? Mm, I think you get 8,1 times 10 to the negative 6. Okay, and this is going to be Newtons, but we need to first of all do the second part of this. Okay, so we found what S does to P. So now we're going to do the same thing again. Okay, we, but we're going to now find the force of T on P. And it's going to be the same here, 9 times 10 to the 9 times 3 times 10 to the negative 9 all squared. Okay, by the way, we're not supposed to have the sign in here. We're supposed to be working out the directions, but the sign mustn't be in the calculation. Sorry, that's my copy-paste problem. So, because all of these have got identical charges, on the top, Q1, Q2, they're both 3 times 10 to the negative 9, but now my distance is 0, 0,3 squared. And if you put this into your calculator you get something like 
9 times 10 to the negative 7. Okay. So now these are the two numbers that are going to go on these arrows. So this is one side, 8,1 times 10 to the negative 6 down, and 9 times 10 to the negative 7 to the left, okay? So if we want the magnitude of this, we're going to use Pythagoras, okay? So using Pythagoras, the net force is going to be the square root because I'm going to just do the shortcut here like in the in the memo because using Pythagoras it says a squared plus b squared equals c squared so to find c which is my net force f it'll be the square root of this value okay all squared inside the root remember we're all still inside the root sign here plus this value, okay, also all squared. Now this is all under that root sign. So then you end up with a value of f is going to be equal to, I don't know, but you can use your calculator. According to my previous calculations, I get 8,15 times 10 to the negative 6, no unit, no mark, newtons. Okay, and it just wants the magnitude, so we can leave it there with just this as the magnitude. Now it says to you, calculate the net electrical field at the origin due to charges S and T. Now the net electrical field is the force experienced, which we've just calculated, per unit charge placed at that point. So we know the value of the charge at P, okay? So we use this formula. See this one? E equals F over Q. E is the force per unit charge. So we say E is equal to the force per unit charge. So it's F over F over Q, okay? Because we've worked out the net force in the previous calculation, the net force is this value here. Okay, and this is divided by, this is divided by how much charge we've got at that point. How much charge have we got at that point? We've got this minus three times 10 to the negative nine. Okay, so we put the value in here. No, that is not what we want to put in there. We want to put this in there. Okay. So it's the force per unit charge. And if you do this complicated calculation, force per unit charge, you get 2,72 newtons per coulomb. Okay. And that's your final answer there. Because it's how much force would one units of charge get placed at that point. Now it says to you, one of the charge spheres, P and T, experienced a very small increase in mass after it was charged initially. Okay, so this question, I think some people misinterpreted this, so there's two answers in the memo, but the question actually says, one of the two spheres increased in mass when it was very, very first charged. So at the very beginning of the question here, they say they're initially neutral and then they become charged. And from our calculations, I mean from the question, sorry, P is negative and T is positive. So they're telling you right at the beginning, this one was negatively charged and this one became positively charged. So it says to you, which one of them experienced the increase in mass? So how can you be increasing your mass? The only way you can be increasing your mass is if you add electrons, because electrons for all that we say they basically have no mass, they do actually have a mass and it's written on your data sheet. So only the one with the negative charge is going to have increased in mass, it has to be P. Now it says to you, calculate the increase in mass by the sphere. So you say to yourself, okay, in the beginning of the question here, P was initially neutral and then it got 
this charge here, okay? So my charge on P okay, is this value. So now how many electrons is this value? So we go up here and we use this one. The number of electrons gives you the charge on the object over the charge on an electron. So we're going to need the charge on an electron. So N equals Q over E. Okay. So we say here N equals Q over E. Or if you prefer, you can go Q divided by E. And this is the value for E, the charge on an electron. So it's the negative charge here. I mean, this total charge on the electron. Okay. Divided by, this is the total charge on the object, divided by the charge on an electron. Okay, so how many electrons are we going to get here? You've got to plug this into your calculator. So this is 15 times 10 to the negative 9 divided by 1.6 times 10 to the negative 9. What? What have I done here? Oh, it's 10 to the negative 19. Okay, so I've got something like 've done something wrong here I have done something wrong here see you should never trust me with my calculator hmm. I've got 9,375 times 10 to the power of positive 10 okay so that is really an awful lot of electrons okay this is the number of electrons that we have now it says to you, but now how much mass was it? You find the mass because you know the mass of one electron. On your data sheet, you get told this, okay? One electron weighs 9,11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilos. And if we've got this many electrons, my total mass is going to be the mass on an, the number of electrons here, yes? multiplied multiplied by the mass of one electron so if you plug that all into your calculator you're going to get something like 8.55 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms because this is in kilograms so this will also be in kilograms so negative not 31 negative 20 kilograms so this is how you calculate it first of all you have to find out how many electrons you've got then you've got to multiply them each by how much the electron weighs and this is how you come out at the answer